Okay, in this first lesson, we're going to take a look at some initial steps and some things to keep in mind whenever setting up your scene for lighting. Okay, so this is the scene that we're going to be working with. So you can see that uh, overall this is very, very straightforward. So we have sort of this living room interior, uh, entertainment center, a few things sort of laying around, couch, and really not just a whole lot else. You can see this is a relatively simple scene here. Now, before we start to jump right into the lighting, as I mentioned, I want to point out just a few things to keep in mind and some things that uh, I find are extremely helpful to do early, early on in my lighting process. The first thing, and this is probably the most important thing to keep in mind, is that I always try to model my scene to scale. So what that means is that uh, whenever looking at this particular room, uh, this does have the real world dimensions of a room like this. So if I were to select let's say this room geometry and jump over here and go to my measure tool. If we were to look at the dimensions on this, you can see that we are looking at about a little over a thousand centimeters by about 1300 centimeters and the height of this room or the height of the ceiling is about 333 centimeters. So uh, as far as any kind of a real world unit that would correspond to a room that has a ceiling that's about 10 feet tall. So whenever we come in and make sure that our scene has been modeled to scale, that's going to make it so much easier to get uh, realistic light fall off, realistic light behavior. It's going to make this whole process so much easier. So a uh, very, very important thing to keep in mind that you always want to make sure that your scene is modeled to some kind of a real world scale. The second thing that I like to do if from a very, very early stage is to try to settle on some kind of a camera angle. So I have a camera positioned, and you can see it's actually uh, set up here in this top viewport. So this is camera 01. And the reason for this is because I really don't like to uh, light up my scene and then have to come in and try to settle on some kind of a camera angle after the fact. Uh, and a lot of that really just comes back to traditional lighting techniques. If you look at studio lighting or even film, uh, some kind of an onset lights, Usually these types of light setups will look good from a particular angle, but they really don't look great from every angle. In fact, they may look uh, completely horrible from certain angles. But the lighting has always been set up with a particular camera angle in mind, and I really approach my CG lighting in very much the same way. So by deciding on a camera angle really, really early on, I can really focus on making sure my lights look good from that particular camera angle instead of trying to figure it out later after the fact. So with those two things in mind, we're now pretty much ready to start our initial light setup. So in a scene like this, uh, what I want to do is get kind of a realistic uh, daylight type of a scene. So I'd like to have some sunlight that's sort of streaming through this window and illuminating this whole room. Although a lot of the illumination from this room is going to be provided by secondary illumination, uh, light that's bouncing off the walls, off the floors, and things like that. So. To start this off, let's begin with just a simple 3ds Max daylight system. So I'm going to just jump to my top view. Let's go to Create, System, and we'll drop in a daylight system. It's going to ask us if we want to add some kind of a logarithmic exposure control. We'll go ahead and click Yes. So let's draw out our compass. And now we can move our mouse to position our light source doesn't really matter where we position it because we can always come back and adjust that later. Once I, we're done, I'm just going to right click to make sure that I'm finished creating my daylight. Now at this point, we can come in and start to actually adjust this to make sure that the sunlight's coming in from the proper direction. So I'm going to grab my daylight system up here, or my sun. And over here in the modifiers, let's go into setup. And in my case, I'm going to try to get sort of an early morning view. So maybe the sun's down a little bit lower, coming in at sort of a, a nice angle here. Although in my case, as I start to adjust my hours down to about 9 a.m., uh, you can see that my sunlight is actually over on the wrong side of the room. So to fix that, I'm just going to grab this north direction and spin that around to where we have a little bit more of an easterly type direction. So in my case, that's going to be about between 110 and 120 degrees in my north direction. Now, let's jump in and just take a quick render of this. So I'm going to press Shift-Q 
on my keyboard. Okay, so initially, not just a whole lot to see here. So you can see I do have this set to render from my camera. I'm actually going to go ahead and lock that, so that way I can make sure I don't accidentally render from any of my other viewports. Now, I do want to come in and change my renderer to Metal Ray, since that's what we're going to be using right now. It's just set to the default scanline renderer. So let's go into the common tab, scroll all the way down, assign renderer, and we'll switch this to Metal Ray. Now, while I'm here, I'm also going to turn on this force two-sided. I always like to turn that on, so that way I can make sure that anything that is a flat piece of geometry will still be rendered with uh, both sides intact. So with that, let's go ahead and re-render this. Okay, so again, not just a whole lot to see here. Uh, overall, the scene is very, very dark. So what we're going to do is, in our next lesson, we're going to begin the first stage of addressing this scene and brightening this up to something that is a little bit more acceptable.